Yeah, I wouldn't really call myself a soil scientist, I'm more an agronomist, so just to clarify that. Um, so yeah, so this, um, uh, we did a lime trial out at Tiakau. so Tiakau is um, west Waikato, it's north of the Raglan Harbour, um, and uh, west of um, Narawahia, location-wise, it's an area that's subject to uh, summer droughts, and there's a local farm advisor out there, and he tells me that uh, in that region they probably only grow about five tonne of dry matter, so normally. Um, what, uh, it's a, this is a trial that's a farmer-initiated trial. Um, what it was, a number of uh, farmers out that area had uh, put on some lime, and they'd seen some quite big changes in the way the animals grazed the paddocks, and also their production, um, and as a result of that, um, they wanted to find out why, why it was that the animals found the pastures more palatable. So we set down this trial. We looked at uh, four um, treatments of lime. Um, there was a uh, 1.25 ton, 2.5 ton, 5 ton, and 10 ton to the hectare um, rate. So if you want to um, see what 10 ton to the hectare looks like in that picture there in the bottom left corner, that's the 10 ton to the hectare uh, hidden at once. Um, and our starting pH of this was 5. Um, and uh, um, when we looked at the palatability things after the year, we did a, looked at BRICS testing, we did a feed analysis, um, ME, um, ADF, digestibility, all those sort of things. We couldn't find any differences. So we couldn't actually nail what was the uh, um, cause of the improvement of pasture palatability. Um, but uh, what we did find is there was a big increase in pasture production. And... Uh, um, so the trial has just been a one-year trial. We actually carried on for four years. We got some sponsorship from a couple of line companies. And uh, um, so the changes there in the pH. So you can see in the first year, um, going across the top, that basically the 10 tonne to the hectare um, only raised at the same as what the 5 tonne to the hectare rate did. But over time, that 10 tonne to the hectare sort of um, on the fourth year was up to uh, 6.2 pH. So it took a while for that uh, a high rate of lime to work its way through. Um, also, the site had aluminium toxicity, and uh, um, the, uh, when we look at the aluminium levels, so basically anything above a three is uh, prone to aluminium toxicity. Um, three to sort of five, anything above five, uh, you, you will uh, find toxicity. This is using a calcium uh, chloride extraction. Um, so you can see uh, there again at this sort of 10 tonne, um, on the right hand side, so year one it had dropped basically from 14 down to a four, uh, various rates, and then down to sort of one um, by, by year four. Um, in terms of pasture dry matter production over those four years, uh, so as I say, the normal uh, dry matter production is basically at five tonne to the hectare. The first two years were actually wet summers, so you can see the control grew eight tonne of dry matter, and uh, that increased up to 12 tonne to the, uh, to the high rate. Um, the second year got six tonne of dry matter and went up to about sort of nine tonnes. So it was a very, very uh, um, responsive site to lime. Um, the uh, third and fourth years were very dry summers, so therefore the uh, uh, production was only basically around that four tonne um, in the control plots um, and um, the high rates up to about eight tonne. Um, so some of the reason for the big increase in dry matter was pasture species changes. So if you look there on the left-hand side, ryegrass, basically we did a uh, point analysis over the winter and uh, um, 29 um, ryegrass only basically uh, was 29% of the uh, points up to 80% um, at the 10 tonne to the hectare rate. Um, so big increase in ryegrass. If you go to the far right, you look at the weeds and the weeds drop from 47 right down to 5 various rates. Um, the native grass, the dominant native grass was uh, sweet vernal, um, so lime didn't affect that at all. Uh, had a big effect in reducing chewing fescue, was a little weed sort of fescue plant, not like your tall fescue. White clover increased, um, and uh, with increasing rates of lime and sub sort of didn't really uh, make much difference, uh, neither did lotus. Um, the economics, um, working on a cost of lime at $30 a tonne, $25 for cartilage, and 60 for application by plane. Um, over those four years, um, the lighter rates of lime were most economic, so they basic three cents a kilo of dry matter, up to eight cents for the higher rates. Um, still, hot, uh, I'd argue, very highly economic at uh, 10 tonnes of hectare at this site here. Um, you change the um, economics change when you're looking at ground spreading, where the application drops from $60 a tonne down to $20 a tonne. Um, and uh, 
This is a picture of the, uh, on the th third year, so you can see the effect of Lyme. Uh, this is looking at the bottom of the trial, so that first plot in the uh, bottom left-hand corner is 10 tonne. Uh, next to that was the uh, control and going across um, various rates of Lyme. Uh, similarly from the top, so right in the front there is a control plot with a cage in it, and then you've got next to that a 10 tonne to the hectare. So um, outside of that, um, you've got uh, no Lyme being applied. And here we are, this is just um, six years later, uh, we've less, left the pots there, so you can see the... Uh, high rate of lime in the front there, 10 tonne to the hectare in various, um, uh, uh, it, uh, yeah, there wasn't anything next to that. Um, so just in case of time, I'll sort of whip through that conclusion, pretty much touch that, and uh, that's the um, sponsors there, so thank, thank Beef and Lamb and the Lime Companies and Ravensdown and uh, Pickett's Hill Farm. And also acknowledge um, uh, Mike Dodd uh, as a co-author of the paper from the proceedings. Thank you.